Hey, welcome to JG3 Reviews. My name is James, and around here I like to explore the world of fountain pens, ink, and paper, and today it is a fountain pen. Looking a lot like a Pilot Decimo or Vanishing Point, this is the Mahjong A2, their newest entry into the world of clickable fountain pens. Now, this pen, unlike the Mahjong A1 or the Pilot Vanishing Point, is a plastic faceted pen and really more like a mid-century pilot capless pen. So today we're going to look at this pen. I'm going to show you all the little features and things about the pen and we'll see how it writes and I'll tell you what I like and what I don't like. So let's spin that camera and get to it. So here we have the Mahjong A2 and it is a plastic pen. It is faceted all the way around and as I said because of the material choices and the band here in the middle which is a plastic band it's a lot like a mid-century pilot retractable pen rather than the current decimo or vanishing point although you certainly see cues to those modern pens the knock of course looks just like a pilot knock and and it also looks just like the pilot section. The clip is a bit different from the A1, you will notice, and it is springier, really easy to use, and I think quite good, and I think I may actually prefer it, even though it is just stamp steel. It does look a little bit cheaper compared to the A1's clip, which is just like a pilot vanishing points which is stiffer and more rounded and has that pinch for your grip in it and that makes it just a little bit stronger and stiffer and uh, I don't know just looks a little bit better of course I think the Pilot does of course look the best and maybe a little bit springier than that A1. Now those chromey bits are as you can see fingerprint magnets so they do offer this pen with a black matte trim I just I wanted this green and I thought it looked better with the chrome trim but they do offer it in matte black and you can get it in that all matte black or with some pretty colorful barrel colors offset by black trim now the pen is quite light this pen weighs in inked at 20 grams and that compares to 32 for my pilot vanishing point and 35 for my A1, both of which are also inked. Now aside from the plastic barrel and this midpoint trim being different, the other difference is that you do not have a trim ring here at the knock. And when I first got it, I actually thought that was a mistake and had to go back and look at the ad, but that is correct. That's the way the pen is made. And again, is more similar to a mid-century Pilot retractable pen. All right, let's talk about that nib, which as I said, you will notice, does still say Moon Man. It is an extra fine nib, steel, and this is the only nib that is available for this pen. You can get a good look at that plastic feed there. And you can get replacement nibs, but so far those are also just extra fine. They are literally just a replacement nib. Pilot, however, has a special alloy, as they call it, nib, which is a gold-plated alloy nib. Writes like a steel and writes quite well. That's what I have in my blue vanishing point. And those are a lot less expensive than a typical vanishing point. But the typical vanishing point gives you options. You do pay for that gold nib, but you also get to choose. So you've got a, a wider range of nibs, including a stub, which I bought as a replacement nib because you can do that. And that's not nearly as expensive as the entire pen. And I think it may be the only Pilot Fountain Pen where you can buy those replacement nib units. So you are limited on options, but it is a decent nib. Now one thing that people ask about the Vanishing Point, the A1, and I suppose the A2 now, is how difficult are these pens actually to clean, maintain, and re-ink? Well, you open them up just like any other pen. Be careful though, because it is, of course, spring-loaded. Don't let anything get away from you. You will find that I have this one already inked with the included converter, which, by the way, I prefer over the Pilot converters. Here you will find what is really inside the functional pin. And so you have this matte metal finish on the inside. You have the notch that lines up here. If you were putting this pin back together, you would line that notch up and then screw the barrel back on. It's really not as complicated as it's made out to be, but you will notice that with the converter, you really have no clue how much ink you have. I know I have some. It's dark right there. And that's one con that you'll find people have about these particular pens is that it's hard to know how much ink you have. It's kind of a mystery. And so, yeah, there is a little bit more to it to find out how much ink you have, and it's best to top it off if you're not sure. 
But other than that, it's normal. You can use pilot style proprietary cartridges. You can use a pilot converter in this if you want to. I would use the included one instead. And they also give you these accessories. So you get an eyedropper to refill both the included empty cartridge which came in the pen and an extra cartridge as well. And so that's all very handy. If you're not sure how to do that, here are the included instructions. Very good. And it's really as straightforward as any other pin at that point. Then as I said, to reassemble, you just line up that notch and screw in the pin. Now if you do use the converter, then you're done. If you're using a cartridge, then it has a cartridge protector to protect the cartridge from getting damaged by the knock and continual clicking, and you would want to slide that over. I believe if I open up my A1, yes, you can see what that looks like in place. And so you would just slide that over the cartridge and continue on. Very, very simple. You clean that inner mechanism just like you would clean a fountain pen itself. It's really not that difficult. Now again, the biggest difference is of course material. This is plastic, it's faceted, and it's narrower. So if you look at this vanishing point, hopefully you can tell that that is wider. It's not by a great deal. You're talking about, I think 12.2 maybe on the vanishing point versus 10.8 and I, I measured that here where you would hold the pen about here. So not a huge difference but between the lightness and being slightly narrower it does make a difference in the feel of this pen. The lightness especially transforms the pen. So if you find the heaviness of a vanishing point or even more so the A1 to be a con for you this would be a pen you might want to consider. Time for a quick size comparison. This is, of course, the Mahjong A2, most similar in size, <laughs> I suppose, to the Pilot Vanishing Point. You just knew that had to be in there, right? And the Curados from Platinum, a much longer retractable pen, just kind of a giant compared to the others. And then just for something completely different, a Lamy 2000. And here the pins are ready to write. We really don't have posting and unposted and all that good stuff today. Perhaps the only real surprises here are that the Curados, when it's actually in use, is not any longer than the other pins, and that the Lamy 2000 is much longer once it's posted. How does the pen write? First, let's talk ergonomics. That lightness really does make this a pleasant pen to write with. I wasn't annoyed by the weight of the A1 or the vanishing point. And when I first picked this pen up, I actually wasn't sure I was going to like the lightness because I'm so used to the heft of the other two pens, but it's winning me over. Ink today is diamine. I'm not going to have room. Denim. This ink is really similar to me to uh, Waterman Mysterious Blue in its color, and I'm really enjoying it. I'll review that here soon as well. The nib on this pen really is nice and smooth. Let's go for wetness down here. And for an extra fine, that's really quite good. I find the flow good. I have no problems with skips or anything like that, although we will do a speed test here in just a second. And I've written with this pen quite a bit in the week that I've had it, and it really is a nice writer. The nib has been dependable. The only issue I had is when I tested the pilot parts inside it and while they should be an easy fit mine just didn't click as smoothly. I'm going to let you hear this. This one works quite well really good and smooth. Compare it to the A1 seems like that's a little louder in the all metal but very smooth and of course the pilot also has a slightly different sound, also very smooth. 
All good mechanisms, I would give the nod to the pilot. But this one works quite well, except that it wasn't an exact fit on mine. Other people have said that theirs uh, is a direct swap, but I'm, I'm not going to be doing that with mine because it just wasn't as smooth as the stock unit. Now let's do a quick writing test. All right, now that's no pressure at all, just kind of letting it glide over the page. And look at that. Ink flow was excellent and not even a light point. It's got the thinnest and lightest. That's right there, and that is really good. So flow is quite good for an extra fine nib. Uh, I'm, in, I'm impressed. It, it writes well and I like it. And I'm picky about extra fines because they're not my favorite nib. So if I like it, I like it. And I haven't had any issues. Let's talk pros and cons. First pro would be the cost and the value of the pen. It's a very reasonable price. I paid, I think, $26 for this pen, including shipping from China to my door. And it was reasonably quick and very well packaged. So that would definitely be a pro. You get a lot of pen for the money. This kind of a fountain pen is never cheap. If it is, it's just absolute junk. So uh, that's a very reasonable price, and you get a good functioning pen. I've had the A1 for quite a while, and while I can't speak to the long-term reliability of this pen, I can speak to its stable mate. I haven't written with this pen for two weeks, and it sat inked in a pen case and uh, check this out you see what I'm saying there you go that's how this pen has performed for me from day one it has never given me problems it has been rock solid and that I appreciate of course that's also true for my pilot vanishing point but this is not a vanishing point this is a Mahjong and I'm going to have the same expectation of it. If it turns out to be a dud long term, I will come back on here and let you know that. Okay, so one of the pros I'm going to put is that my A1, that's why there's an asterisk. It is technically a different model, but it's the same writing unit. That A1 reliability gives me confidence that this pen should be reliable. Again, that doesn't always happen. I'll let you know if it turns out to be otherwise. Third, this nib is really smooth and reliable for an extra fine I really like it. And fourth, those included parts. Not only does it come with two empty cartridges that can be refilled with the included eyedropper, but it includes a converter, and the converter itself is a superior converter on just everyday ease of use. No, it doesn't look as premium in its parts. No, it probably doesn't have pilot build quality. Yes, it is more practical every day, and pilot really really needs to just simplify and make the same style converter. All right, let's talk cons. Let's take the elephant out right here at the beginning. Yeah, the lack of originality. This pen, like so many Mahjong shows, they have tremendously good manufacturing capability. What they need is equally good originality in their design. They make improvements, and I appreciate that. Now, let's make some originality strides. You guys can do it. For me, the second one would be not knowing what type of plastic is used and how durable it may or may not be. It may be a 30-year pen. It may not be. I just don't know. I don't have bad experience with Mahjong and plastic pens uh, from them or from a lot of other manufacturers. So my expectation is it will be fine. But new pen, there are extra stresses on the plastic of a pen like this compared to, say, a metal a1. So it, I think it's fair to ask the question and to leave that out there as we will have to wait and see. Now while I'm mentioning that, you will notice that they have used a brass insert. Some people have said that theirs doesn't operate as smooth as their metal A1 and it may be something rubbing up against that brass insert since it does have an edge on both sides and, and maybe that's where that's coming from I don't know but, you know what's the durability of that what's the durability of that little plastic part in there for the knot I don't know so I think that is a fair con you will have to just you know determine whether or not that's a risk you take on your own and I'm not going to write it down because I don't think it's necessarily big enough to be called a con but some of you really loved the concept of a clipless 
A1, and so much so that you'd like Pilot to adopt that as well. And this is at least not yet offered in a clipless form factor. I would not be surprised at all if it comes out in one, but so far that hasn't happened. Watch, it'll go on the market tomorrow after I release this video because that's happened before. Anyway, at the moment, it is clip only, and uh, I know some of you would probably enjoy that clipless even more. All right, that's my review of the Majan A2, a great little plastic pen that narrows things down a little bit for those with a smaller grip, that makes it lighter, which for many will just be a more enjoyable pen to carry and to write with, and it's a pretty good value proposition for the money. But what do you think? Do you have one? What's been your experience? Would you like to see that clipless version or not? What changes would you make to this pen? What would be your pros and cons of this pen if you had made this video? Include all of that in the comments below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It helps to make this channel spread and grow. And with that, I want to thank you for all of your participation in the channel and your support over time. Really greatly appreciated, and I appreciate the encouragement that you give. God bless you, and have a great week.